So many of you probably remember my homemade ducted fan jet. The plane itself seemed aerodynamically sound and it looked really cool while not having to use a rudder. Of course the main focus of this project was to increase the thrust output by the propeller by adding a duct and observing the effects. However when I was flying the plane it seemed like it had less thrust than it did without the duct. Naturally I wanted to investigate. Just as a disclaimer before I get started, I am by no means an aeronautical engineer yet. Um, so don't quote me on any of this stuff. I'm just going to talk about the effects that I observed. First off, I built a thrust stand that you saw in some of my other videos so that I could test the thrust of the ducted fan versus the thrust of the dry propeller. Starting with my homemade thrust stand, I increased the throttle until it maxed out at 7 ounces of thrust. It also drew about 8.3 amps. I then tested the propeller without the duct and got a max thrust of 14 ounces. This setup drew the same amount of current, if not a little bit more. So the results were confusing. Instead of doubling the thrust output, my homemade duct had cut the thrust in half. What could I have been missing? After watching a video about duct theory by RC Model Reviews, I had a better idea of what was going on. Basically, my duct had too long of a channel for the size of the propeller. In addition, any extra space between the rotors and the outside walls of the duct is lost efficiency and thrust. So, because I made the design sort of inaccurately with foam board, I couldn't get it to be as close as I wanted to to the wall of the duct. So if I couldn't just build my own duct, how else would I accomplish this? The answer came to me in the form of 3D printing and files online. First I printed these two ducts. One of them was a mistake because the scale was wrong, but they follow every design to increase efficiency and thrust except for one, which I'll explain later. There are several key differences between these ducts and my homemade one. First off, they're skinnier, allowing less drag from the air hitting the sidewalls. They also have what's called a lip, which essentially acts like a sideways airfoil. By increasing the surface area of the inlet, it allows for the air to accelerate faster as it flows through the smaller outlet. Basically, it creates a high and low pressure zone that the air wants to diffuse faster through. Now, let's get to the tests. With this duct, I actually had to mount it on the opposite side of the beam of my thrust stand because it could not act as a pusher prop. To compensate for this, I did the same with the dry propeller. With the propeller oriented this way, I measured 10 and a quarter ounces of thrust, while drawing between 11 and 10 amps. Now time for the control, which ended up measuring 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half ounces of thrust. It also drew much less current. So again, the ducted fan did not produce more thrust. It was definitely an improvement over my homemade one, but it did not even fully produce the same amount as the dry propeller. This leads me to the final version of the prop duct, which includes stator blades. This is the final difference I was talking about earlier, and helps to redirect the air so that it goes directly back from the propeller and doesn't get caught in vortices that reduce efficiency. Here's what the two different types of ducts look like. In this final test, the prop drew around 8.5 amps, 8.3 amps, and 11 and a quarter ounces of thrust. Just to be sure, I did one last control test, which resulted in the same amount of thrust. In conclusion, my homemade prop duct decreased thrust by about half instead of increasing it. The 3D printed ducts fared better, but still did not increase the thrust at all. In fact, the thrust was exactly the same. I'm figuring I'm coming to the same conclusion as RC Test Flight did, which is that the propeller and the duct both have to be made specifically for operating as a prop duct. Otherwise, they're just glorified prop guards. The problem with buying at least hobby-grade ducted fans is that they're actually generally more inefficient than motors that are meant to spin larger props due to the nature of the motors spinning at a high RPM, not to mention the fact that they're not as responsive as regular propellers. Overall, I can see this being helpful on very large-scale aircraft where the KV of the motor is really low, along with a propeller and duct that is designed specifically for the motor. Actually, a good example of this is Airbus's electric plane that flew over the English Channel. However, as for RC applications, I can't see it as being very applicable. Anyway, thanks you guys for watching, and I hope you guys learned something.